Good morning. Morning. Come, let us worship the Lord. Trinity Life Center at Madison Hillsdale. 
and the visit inspecting ladies from all over the district and there's no charge at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. and so for the ladies that would like to go and be blessed I know you will be the it's next Saturday in Trinity Life Centers at the corner of Madison and Hillsdale yeah. okay so right right off of Highway 80 so it's real easy to find and uh, I'll pray for today. Amen. Oh, oh my We had a wonderful time with Crafty last time. Wow. Yeah, good time. Amen. 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 God bless us. And even though the towel went out uh, before we got there, we and uh, the we people we were working on. with, yeah, we prayed it back on. Amen. Amen. The people we, we were working with were so wonderful, though. Even when the power went out, they said, Don't worry, we have a generator for the food. Just go get some candles, and we'll serve you guys. Yeah. 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 So, you know, it was, it was just such a wonderful spirit last night. Amen. You know? And uh, they, they wish me a nice happy birthday. I'm 49. I'm going to stay 49 for a few years. So, so uh, I wonder if I'm 39. Every time I told somebody I was 39, they were like, yeah, right. How old are you really? And so I'm uh, 49. And uh, God has blessed me. And I'm so uh, wonderfully uh, honored to have so many Precious, beautiful friends of mine. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Family. Amen. 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 Well, let's worship the Lord. Let's, uh, we're here to do that. And uh, let's turn, turn it over right now to our voices of victory. We'll, we'll catch up with the Parsha uh, when Pastor Fonda arrives. Uh, they're a little bit slow this morning. We're trying to get our children off to the temporary job. Oh, yes, ma'am. They're walking in the door right now. Oh, oh, there's, there's Pastor Fonda. Let's, let's just welcome her now, because it's time for a hard time. Italian man and his wife 
said, ah, there's only the best, sweetest words to my ears. I guess the dear. He <laughs> was so sweet. He was a brilliant man. He ran the finances of California for a time. And he was a pilot and he was a colonel, lieutenant colonel in the Air Force. And uh, he was, you would never know when Inez was around that he had all, he had so many brains because anything she said, it was just sitting there. <laughs> But, uh, you know, that made their marriage a happy one, and, and it, it worked it worked for them. And I, my sons always said, I can't do a lesson for my uncle to go. <laughs> so, yes, so, moving right along, I'm going to go back to the more serious things of the Parsha. And, Pekura, uh, I think. <laughs> I'm not, I'm going to have to take it. Good day. Thank you, Pastor. The week of March 6th, 2016, to March 12th, 2016. The Torah readings from Exodus 38, 21, to Exodus 40, 38. The prophets, 1 Kings 7, 51, to 1 Kings 8, 21. The gospel, John 6, 1 through 71. The glory and the tabernacle thought for the week. The paradox between the immanence of God and the transcendence of God paradox is illustrated in the mechanics of the tabernacle. The uncontainable and approachable God is somehow contained, so to speak, within and may be approached within a physical tabernacle on earth. The paradox between immanence and transcendence it's also obvious in our sorry attempts to form a Christology which would explain the divine nature of the Messiah. It is a mystery no less profound than the mystery of God taking up residence within the space of the tabernacle. It would seem to be an impossibility, nonetheless, he did. A sudden shout rose up through the assembly, and all eyes were fixed on the upon the mountain. The cloud which had covered the top of the mountain these many days seemed to be descending. Yes, it was, rolling and cascading down the mountainside like a sudden avalanche of vapor, mist, and smoke. A panic spread through the people. A holy terror seized every heart, as if choreographed in advance all Israel. Every man, woman, and child fell prostrate to the ground. There was a brilliant light emanating from the cloud as it dropped from the top of Mount Sinai. The peak of the mountain was now visible, gleaming in the sun. Without the cloud covering it, it seemed to be a small, humble, and insignificant mountain after all. The Lord had left Sinai. The, then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Exodus 40, 34 through 30, 40. Excuse me. Exodus 40, 34 through 35. God had taken up residence in the tabernacle, but he was unapproachable, even Moses who was accustomed to standing upon Mount Sinai and basking in the glory of the presence of the Lord, could not enter. Yes, amen. How is it then that Moses was able to withstand God's glory on Mount Sinai, yet it was not, was not able to enter the tabernacle? When Moses ascended Sinai, he entered into the true tabernacle, the very courts of God. Thus, the glory of God on the mount represents the glory of God in the world to come and the new covenant, whereas the glory of God in the tabernacle is his glory in this world and covenant. That is the reason Moses can approach on the mountain, but was unable to do so when the glory descends to the earth. The mountain symbolized the heavenly reality. Thus, even Yeshua had to veil his glory, except while on the mountain of transfiguration, a parallel to Sinai. 
His glory will only be fully revealed when the heavenly reality is fully realized on earth. And that day, God's people will be able to approach the glory without restriction. As John notes, I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb are its temple. And the city has no need of the sun or of the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is illuminating it, and its lamp is the Lamb. Revelation 21, 22 through 23. I'll just stand up and say, Sister Marie is going to come and lead us in worship. So, where is Sister Marie? Good to see you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As we prepare ourselves to worship the Lord, we're going to sing a few songs. We um, ask that you stand with us, clap with us, sing with us as we start our worship for the locality.
Let us stand and come forth and receive the blessings. Amen. 
The word of God says, I lay before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Choose life. As we begin and prepare ourselves to partake of the Lord's Supper, I want you to remember you are a set apart people. That means you're a holy people. And you're set apart for the purposes of God. And if you will humble yourselves and seek God's face and turn from your wicked ways, then He will hear from heaven. He will forgive your sins and my sins. And He will heal our land. Do you want to see the greatest harvest in all of history start in the United States? Or are we going to let it start in the third world because we are too prideful to humble ourselves Man, and seek the righteous God? Yes, Lord Jesus. You see, He's going to work it out. The yes, scripture is going to be yes, fulfilled yes, either Lord. way. Man. But we get to choose whether we want to be part of the great harvest Man. or whether we want to be part of the destruction. Oh, the church gets to decide. Man. I go to the movies and. and uh, and sometimes I have to walk out because of the filth that they put on the yes, screen. Amen. Amen. Do you know that's the church's fault? <laughs> Do you know the church had control of Hollywood, but because of their love of money, they gave it up? Yes, they didn't want to spend $50,000 a year to, to, to say what could come out of Hollywood. Mama. So they turned it over to the world and look what we have now. Yes. Do we love God or do we love money? Hallelujah. I know this isn't my usual pattern for receiving the Lord's Supper, but the Holy Spirit just came upon me and I wanted to share that with you today. Hallelujah. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given things, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Right. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This too is often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Right. Yes, amen. Then, for whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. You see, the early church, remember, they were, they were getting sick. And they were going to house to house and they were saying they were partaking of, of the Lord's Supper. All right, yeah. But instead they were, they were taking it like common practice. Wow. They were drinking wine sometimes to get drunk, sometimes it was fermented. And they were taking the bread of the Lord and eating it like it was a snack. And, and God said, no, 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 no. The apostle came and said, no, 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 no. This is holy. This is not, this is not everyday, uh, everyday food. For your, to, to fulfill the lust of your flesh, to satisfy your need for food and drink. This is a holy covenant unto God. This is declaring you are a holy people unto a holy God. And you are set apart for his purposes alone. Amen. Oh, and we are instructed to examine ourselves. Father, come by your Holy Spirit yes, Lord and show us anything that is not pleasing to you. For we oh, are, yes, are mere human beings, men yes, and women, yes, boys and girls. Lord, but you, O righteous God, show us all things. So, yes, Father, Lord, Lord, show us. Yes. Bring us to the place in this moment of repentance. Yes, Cleanse us of our sins by the blood of Jesus. We repent. We do not want to continue in those things that are sinful and not pleasing to you and that separate us from your presence. Let us be bathed in the blood of Jesus, clothed in his righteousness, and wearing robes white as snow that we wash to the blood of the Lamb. I thank you now, Lord, and give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this for me. Now, Jesus, Yeshua, he's a Jew. And he would have said, Baruch ata Arai, Rahim, Malach, Malach, Mamboti, Lachem, Arat. 
Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the bread from the earth. Thus he is proclaiming his own resurrection because he is the bread of life and he rose from the dead on that resurrection Sunday. Let's partake of the body of the Lord. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. This do as often as you drink it, the remembrance of me. And say the English with you, Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Who are you? You're the fruit of the vine. And he came to be the fruit of the life, the blood of Jesus. Let's yeah, partake of the blood of Jesus. Let's take a blood song. Hallelujah. 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 Give our praise. Hallelujah. Take to Jesus.
you want to say anything? No, I'm not ready. <laughs> this one, you know what? The Lord put him as a brother of Brother Bob years ago with Pastor Shepherd. And uh, he's been faithful to, to be there uh, in season and out with Bob and Darlene. And I, I know some of the things you do, and I'll let you get your reward in heaven. But you're a, you're a faithful friend and you're a good brother. And we're going to see you enjoy the rest of the Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Now you sit down either here or there because they're all going to give you a hug when, when you when they come bring your offering. So you have to, so you can sit down somewhere. Sister Barbara, come on. You can sit right in the front for now. Good morning. You know, before I take the offering, I know that uh, Sister Mary's always thanking everybody that helps her, but you know what? She's the net that turns the head. Amen! Amen! And you know, if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't really know what to do. But uh, also, I wanted to tell you, I get phone calls from Pastor and I get phone calls from Sister Mary, and you know, they work like a team. I have never seen, you know, when I get calls, how they just are in sync with each other. <laughs> but Sister Mary, I want to personally thank you. Amen. Not just for Amen. that, what you do, but you know, when I call her and if I'm discouraged, she just prays yes, and picks yes. me right up. And I just want to thank you for being such a such a wonderful, um, blessed encourager. Amen. Okay. What time is it? You know, I, I came upon the scripture, it was 2 Corinthians 9 7. But you know what? I read beyond, you know, sometimes when they tell you one scripture, sometimes the scripture after that might even be better than the one that the first one that they said to read. So let it was 2 Corinthians 9 7. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. Now, the next verse says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you always, what is that word? Always. Having all sufficiency in all things. He didn't say some things. He said all things. That just doesn't mean money. May have an abundance for every good work. Yes. So you want to remember, you know, I was reminded when I was sitting there what I was going to say for offering. You know how the little boys uh, gave the Lord the three loaves and two fishes and it served 5,000. But yes. you know what? It served a more multitude than that. It was yes. not just men that he served. He served the women and the children. Yes. That could be two, three times, four times the amount that it quotes for the men. So, you know, as you give, it's your responsibility to give. But after you give, the Lord takes control. Yes, sir. He yeah. multiplies it like he did the bread and the fishes. He multiplies everything we do yes. as long as we do it for him. And yes. as long as we don't do it begrudgingly. And we do it with our heart and our spirit. God is able to complete what is to God is able to complete and finish what he has started. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes. And he has started this church and he's not finished with us. Amen. And you know, I counted 65 people here last Sunday. And you know, I know some of the people are probably not here today because of uh, the weather. They thought, oh, it's going to be raining this morning. So they probably right. decided to sleep in. But you know, I called uh, Jean, you know, Jean and John. And she was packing yesterday, so pray for her. She sounded a little bit uh, weary. You know, moving is a hard thing to do. All right, let us stand. I've given you enough time to uh, write your checks, do what you need to do. I just need to remind you that uh, we also have capability of ATM. Don't forget that. And don't forget to shake up. Uh, where you go? Brother Bill. Brother Bill. There he is. Get on. 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 Get on.
as you have, speak to our hearts that you would just complete the work that you started in every one of us. Lord, you are capable, you are able, you are worthy. Oh, Lord, we just love you so much. And we know that you're going to do mighty, mighty things in our lives, in our church, in our pastors. Lord, we just thank you for each one. We thank you for our health that you've given us. Lord, we just can't thank you enough for all that you do. Each and every day, 24-7, you're there with us, walking right beside us, sometimes carrying us. And Lord, we just thank you for multiplying yeah. everything this yeah. morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Yeah.
death is prize when it's all down from the cross my sins were gone my sins were gone there is a grave I tried to hide this precious blood that gave me life in three days he breathed again and rose to stand in my defense so I come to tell you he's alive
Hallelujah. Yeah. So they get better every time. Yeah. Amen. They get better all the time. Amen. Thank you, ladies. That is beautiful. Have made it to the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Gonna have Brother Watts sing us out at the end. Okay, last night I said, "You think what you're gonna pray? What you're gonna sing?" Oh, okay. No problem. We didn't plan today because we were busy. <laughs> God's got it. Yes, he does. Always got it. Always. All the time. I thought last night. I thought, what are we gonna do for special music tomorrow? And I went to my bedroom where the phone was charging, and there was a, a text from Sister Marie. Pastor, it's okay to have worship days tomorrow. Amen. Right? Uh, one of the things I would like to do, by the way, before we move on, is one of these Sundays, I would like to uh, just uh, either stay and just go to the fellowship in the Samoan church or else make our main service at the time that they have their service so that we could be in fellowship in one. And uh, besides the children, we won't tell them. We'll let it be a surprise, okay? So that they're, we'll have to, we'll have to get the youth to take a, a vow of silence. So. <laughs> but uh, I would like to, I would like to do that on a, on a similar regular basis, about at least four times a year. I think we should be in service together. Yeah. We go over with that other sample, our um, bishop sample, and. They, we do that. Prince of the church, we have a lot of transition. They moved into an elementary school and uh, they have a, a vision to go a certain direction. So be praying for uh, Bishop Temple in July. Be praying for Victory Temple, um, Albert Adrian Edwards. Down there, be praying for Zion All Nations, uh, Pastor Linda Holman. Be praying for a new Bethel, Pastor Alma Hawkins. You know? Uh, they're all uh, our spirit-filled brothers and sisters in the neighborhood. Be praying for a Christian Fellowship Church. Uh, Christian Fellowship Ministry Church. I always do it backwards or something. Anyway, pa uh, Pastor Alice Baber Banks. And uh, they're, they're, they're also, uh, they work with us closely in the community. Uh, you know, we have a unique situation in this community where we have a lot of churches that have a little bit different traditions. But we have all the same spirit. Amen. And that our hearts are in unity. And uh, so uh, let's pray that God would move us yes. in a direction to where we can come together for evangelistic outreaches. And I'm really praying that uh, instead of it being our church vision and their church vision, and, you know, which we all have to have our unique calling and vision, you know? Nothing yes. wrong with that. But, but that we could all get the vision of the Holy Ghost to reach this neighborhood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I have a crazy dream. I have a dream. Like Martin Luther King Jr. Right. I have a crazy dream. All right. But I know it can be done. I want Del Paso Heights to be the neighborhood where every household is saved. Woo! Yeah. Every household! Yeah. Woo! Do you know we can be the salt and the light that accomplishes that? If the body of Christ, do you know there are 74 churches in a five mile radius? And if we could get it together, saints, and we could come together, and we could fast, and we could pray, and we could call down the Holy Ghost, guess what? He would come and honor that, and this neighborhood could be saved. I believe that we could have an outreach here to the youth, to where every single rival game could show up on holy ground, lay down the weapon to put up the cross of Jesus Christ and be set by his blood. And that we could have an end to violence once and for all. Yeah. Yes. It could be the start of a nationwide revival. Yeah. But we gotta get the vision. Yeah. We must get the vision yeah. to reach the lost. Yeah. Not just to come to church. Oh, I just I've already done all of that. No! The time is now. Yes. Today is the day of yes. salvation. Yes. And the word says, I told Brother Ray this, prophesied earlier, the latter house shall be greater than the former. Yes. And that's what the word says. The latter house shall be greater than the former.
than the former. Amen? Praise God. Sister Mary Lou, she thought one time she was going to hang up her sneakers. But the Lord said, no, get, get it down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use you to teach still. Praise and uh, I'm going to keep using you. And so she took them down. I'm saying using sneakers symbolically. But uh, every one of them, Sister Mary Watts, I told her I was going to throw her a retirement party. But every time I get ready to, the Lord puts her back into action. <laughs> She always said, I'm going to retire. Anyway, do you want to see this neighborhood saved? Yes. Yes. I think this is better. Do you want to see this neighborhood saved? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we just give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you all of us. Because you are worthy of all adoration and praise. Yes, Lord. You are worthy. Yes, Lord. What your spirit spoke to Pastor Edwards is true. Yes, Lord. The fight is fixed. You've already won the battle. Yes, Lord. And all we have to do is walk. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And so, Father, as I begin to teach today, Hallelujah. or preach, however your Holy Spirit would move yes, upon me, yes, Father, I ask that. that only your word will come forth. That I would decrease, you would increase. Man, Let us all have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Hallelujah. Let us be in one mind, one body, one spirit, Father. Yes, Lord. And we ask that you would fulfill your word in us. In yes. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. I don't do a whole lot of this type of teaching or this type of preaching, but uh, this is what the Lord gave you this morning. Yes, amen. And, uh, and there was, I was, I was waiting on him. In fact, uh, I, last night, as well, I sat there in the chair after the crab tree. We got done with crab feet, uh, pretty early. And so I got, I got home at about nine o'clock, and I sat there with my laptop on my on my lap. I turned the television off, and I and I was singing a few praise songs, and I was trying to worship and and figure out what today was going to look like and everybody's schedules because like my uh, young men who live in my house have a temporary job. And, some of them were working this morning, and some of them working this afternoon, and we're just trying to put it all together, you know? And then I was trying to get still in the presence of the Lord, and yeah. as I was sitting there, uh, Pastor Edwards, he sent me a greeting on, on uh, my Facebook message book, and I said, you know what, Pastor? I said, thank you, thank you, thank you. I said, what's the Holy Spirit speaking to you? Because I'm trying to quiet myself in the presence of the Lord, Amen. and to get what his spirit is saying. And uh, he told me, he sent over his message, you know, the fight is fixed. And, oh, it's a great message, you know, and I thought, I could preach that, but you see, that's not how God usually moves on me. Oh, yeah. He usually says, that, that was a good word, but, you know, but it wasn't the word for this house today. Yes, amen. I mean, when we, it, was, it was something good to reference, and it keep, keeps coming back to me, you know, something to think about. God did win the battle already. The fight yes, is fixed. Yes, yes. You know, we don't work in flesh and blood, but it's principalities in high places, and we know that Jesus did win the battle. But as I was thinking about all of this, you know, I still, I just didn't have a word. Many of you don't, don't realize this, that Kevin does, because he's a, he's a planner. He likes to do things in advance, and, and uh, I had I, I to get to where he did he moved into a sinful area of complaining because he wanted my messages, you know, a day or two early. I was like, I can't do it, brother. Because that's not the type of pastor I am. Now, some pastors are like that. Some pastors can plan a whole year of sermons. And God can be in that. It's just not the way he moves on me. That's not the way he moves on me. He moves on me right now. And he has a word for today. And so I was saying, Lord, what is that word? Well, Whatever time I decided to go to bed, I still had nothing. And I went to go to bed, and then the Lord started speaking to me. And so I sat up, but it wasn't a word for me. It was a, it was a prophetic word for one of my friends. And so I said, okay. So I had to start, I picked up my phone, because while the Lord was speaking to me, I wanted to send her an email. It was a wonderful age you live in, you know? And so, because he wouldn't let me go to sleep. I thought, oh, I'll tell her that tomorrow. And the Lord said, no, you'll tell her that tonight. And I'm like, oh, hey, fine. I'll tell her that tonight. 
So I said, well, it's good to hear your voice. Are you giving me my message now? So after I sent the email off, he, he said, okay, go to sleep. I said, all right. So I woke up this morning, and I turned on my worship music. I overslept. I sent Sister Barbara a text that said, pray for me. But I got everything done this morning, because I got to even go to the bank before church today. And drop off Caleb at work all the way. Tell you that one. And uh, he worked it all out. And as I was sitting there, after I, I, I got my coffee and sat down, the Lord just spoke Colossians. So I went to Colossians. This is how your pastor studies. I have, so I went to Colossians. And as I started reading Colossians 1, he said, no, chapter 3. I went, okay, fine. So here we are. We're at Colossians, chapter 3. Now, you know, as a rule, I like to teach out of the King James because I feel like it's the Bible that it, they didn't speak King James in the days of Christ. They spoke in Aramaic and Hebrew and Greek. But I feel that the King James number one is the only version that's not copyrighted. So nobody's making money off of the Word of God. It's just going for free, you know? Uh, and the other translations, they all have some things that are wrong. But they can be helpful. And so today I'm going to parallel, I'm going to jump back and forth, because we're just going to, uh, we're going to go through chapter 3, the whole chapter. And uh, I wanted to talk in plain English in some places, you know. All right. And so I'm going to use the translation I'm not really that fond of, to be honest, for study purposes. But I am fond of it. I found the music to, to try to take the word that was written thousands of years ago and put it in today's language, you know. So, so uh, I'm going to be going back and forth, but the, the, the message Bible that I'm going to use sometimes uh, is, is not, it's, I look at it as more of an explanation than actual scripture. King James we can trust, all right? We know King James we can trust it. So, let's look at Colossians chapter 3. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek the things above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Alright. Alright. That's why you're entitled the message above. Yes. Do you understand that all that matters? Is what really comes after this life? Yes, amen. Right. You know, as Pastor Lane also used to always tell us, all the rest is just hay and stubble. That's right. That's right. All the rest is hay and stubble. He said, the only thing that's going to ever matter is what lasts one second into eternity. After you've drawn your last breath on this side and you've entered the other side of this life, the only thing that's going to matter are the things. Of God that lasts. Amen? Amen. You know, there was a rich man, and he agreed to marry this really, really poor lady. She just sat on his feet all the time, and she said, You know, I make a really good wife. And he said, Yeah, I know you just want all my money. And she said, And he said, Well, I'm really pretty, and I make a really good wife. I'm just really poor, though. I need you to marry me pretty soon. I make a really good wife. I'll serve you all the days of your life. And the man said, well, I'll take your boss and I'll take you in. So he marries this woman and he kind of grows to love her over the years. And she, she kept her word. She's a really, really good wife. He's really, really, really wealthy, you know. And, but he wasn't quite sure she really loved him for who he was. And so All right, now. she... He, he called a meeting with his attorney and, and he had his will changed. And so he asked her, do you think, do you want to see what I changed my will to? She said, no, I'm fine. And he said, okay. And he, she just kept on loving him and serving him all the rest of the days of his life. And when he was laying on the deathbed, he realized she had been really true to him. And he said, oh, I should change my will before I die. And then he drew his last breath. So they go to the reading of the will before the funeral, and it says he stipulated that he wanted all of his money to be buried. 
bearing with him. And so really, yeah, I want to bury all my money with him. So they filled up his coffin, got to get an extra big one, <clears throat> put all the money all around him. They had the funeral service and his widow was sitting there and, and the stipulation was as long as they buried him with all of his money, his widow could have his house. And, and, and enough money to take care of the taxes every year. All the rest is going to a fund. So they were sitting there and watching and watching. They're burying them. Had the service and she was really good. Right at the end she stood up and says, Hold up boys! We said, what are you doing? She says, I'm following the conditions of this will. This, but this, this, this task is going to be too heavy, so here, come on in here. I want you to take all that money out and stick it over there. Let's go put it in the bank. And he said, but that's going to violate the, the, the conditions of the will. And she said, oh, that's okay. No, no, no. I'm going to write you a check. <laughs> she put a check in there with it and took all the money, right? <laughs> Illustrating the point, you can't take it with you. Yeah. You can't take it with you. Amen. It's all God's. Everything he gives us is for his, it's for his use. Amen. So let's look at things here. In the message you read, so if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. All right. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up. Uh, and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. Yes. See things from his perspective. Yes. Amen. Amen. Look up. Amen. Look at look at where where is Christ right now? Where is he? He's right here. But where is his physical presence besides right here? Because we know he's on, omnipresent. At the right hand of God. Amen. Where are we supposed to be looking towards? The right hand of God. Amen. Amen. And then where he is, we will be also. Correct? Yes. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Amen. You see, you can say it another way. Your old life is dead. Your new life, which is your real life, even though it's invisible to the spectators, All right now. is with Christ in God. Yeah, amen. He! That's Jesus. Is your life. Amen. When Christ, your real life, remember, yes. shows up again on this earth, you'll show up too. Amen. The God. real you. The glorious you. Hallelujah. Meanwhile, be content with obscurity yes. like Christ. Yes. You see, the, this is what we're looking for. Where are you going to be? Looking at this picture, yes. Where are you going to be? Are you going to be with the saints of God? Riding behind Jesus who's on the white horse? Or are you going to be with the dreadful left on earth that are cursing God and are having his wrath poured out upon them? Today is the day of salvation. Choose this day who you will serve. Hallelujah. Keep your eyes on things above. Yeah. Right. Not on things below. Amen. For you are of God. Yeah. Amen. Not of the devil. Amen. If you are of God, act like it. Amen. Praise God. If you're his children, be worthy of that calling. Yeah. Walk on this earth as if you are truly a child of God. God, God. Know who you are. Yeah. Know your position. Hallelujah. Know your right. Yes. 
which is to be alive in Christ Jesus yeah. and to experience every promise in the book. Praise God, praise God. Pray that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life and not blotted out. Hallelujah. And behave in a manner that is worthy of a child of the Most High God. Man, praise the Lord. You know, we get these terms in our head and we hear them so often that they just become terms. We call it Christianese. Oh, bless you, brother, sister. Oh, I love you with the love of the Lord. May the great sins in Christ Jesus also be in you. You know, oh, I'm born again with the born of the Spirit. But let's get past the Christianese and let's put it into real life action. Let's keep it into everyday action and live worthy of the high calling of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. It's hard to preach without the message on the screen. And I can't open it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The team is, I guess this worked out, I can't have my, my uh, notes going blank in the middle of the sermon every week. I know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil, concupiscence, by the way, that means greed. Mm -hmm. I looked that one up today. That means greed. Right. Being it for you. Yes. I think we've all been there at some point. Yes. I was talking to someone earlier this week who said, Amen. don't worry about money, Pastor, because God's got to take care of. I used to be there where I was always worrying about money. God, money, God. money. But you know what? We can't be in it for that. That's a good word. We can't be in it for money. You know, I got to tell you something. The body of Christ, we do need to repent in a lot of high places in the church. Unfortunately, when you grow up in ministry, you get uh, behind the scenes a lot of places. And it almost runs you away from ministry when you see how some pastors behave. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. Praise the Lord. Yes, they are. And I pray I never, ever follow in the footsteps of those false teachers or preachers. My Lord Jesus. My Lord. Greed. Because of these, wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in which he also walked when he lived in them. Besides, you have covetousness, which is idolatry. In the which ye shall also walk sometime, when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all of these. Yes. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Let's go to the uh, message and we'll see what it says about that. It says, and that means killing off everything connected with that way of death. Okay, let's just pause here for a minute. I know we cannot be perfect, for only Christ is perfect. But we can keep trying. We can keep repenting. We can keep asking the Holy Spirit to empower us yes, and we can get up and move forward when we fall. Amen. I was talking to a young man who's really striving to serve God and to walk perfect before him. And I said, that's the way God wants you to walk. Yes. Just know that if and when you fail, God, he's going to love you the same amount. Yes. I don't want you to forget that. Because if you sometimes we get carried away in our own might, in our own power, in our own strength, in ourselves, 
and when we start getting carried up in the rules and the regulations and ourselves, then we get tired or we get weak or sometimes the temptation comes upon us and we can fall. But as long as we realize it's not by might nor by power, but by the Holy Spirit, says the Lord, we can overcome. So we should. There are things on this list I once walked in. And praise God, he has delivered me. You should look at this list. And you should say the same thing as me. There are things I used to do but because of the power of the resurrected Savior and his indwelling presence of his Holy Spirit living in me, I no longer walk after these ways. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So we should kill off everything connected with that way of death. Amen. Sexual promiscuity doesn't need any explanation, does it? Impurity, lust, doing whatever you feel like, whenever you feel like it, and grabbing whatever attracts your fancy. That's a life shaped by things and feelings instead of by God. You see, we don't only serve God when it makes us happy. We don't only serve God when we have plenty of money in the bank and the food's on the table and the bills are all paid. And we have a spouse that we love. We have to serve God no matter what. We've got to thank God for the good times. We've got to thank God for the bad times. We've got to realize that our life is hidden in Christ Jesus. And that he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He will never walk away from us. And even when we lose our faith. Even when we walk the wrong direction, he's there to pick us up. Yes, he is. Yes, he he's is. faithful and he's he just is. and he will forgive us all of our sins. We just must ask. Amen. Jesus said repent for the kingdom of heaven yes. is at hand. Amen. Do not forget that we need to walk and live a life of repentance. Yes. I said to my my mother, Pastor Fonda, recently. Sometimes when I think about death, I feel like a hypocrite. I'm a man of God. I preach. I teach the Word of God. I talk about heaven. I talk about coming back. But every once in a while, Pastor Johnny, when I think about death, I start to have a panic anxiety attack. And I hear the thoughts of Satan. Yeah, there's no God. There's no, this is it. You heard it too. I know you have. Because the devil's a liar. And he's telling me those things he's trying to tell you. But they're lies from the pit of hell. I said, I thought by now, after being a pastor, I've been ordained a lot longer than I've been the senior pastor. I've been ordained, I'm going on 20 years of being an ordained minister of God. You would think I would have grown past that. But you see, I'm still in my flesh. And the devil still comes and he tries to tip me. The devil, he still comes and he tries to lie to me. Because the devil knows if he can take me out, he he can cause me to lose my hope. If he can cause me to lose my faith, I'll quit preaching and teaching the word of God and you'll quit receiving it and there'll be one less person and there'll be one less church and there'll be one less people to proclaim the goodness and the deeds of the Lord. So I gotta say, Satan, get me behind me because I am a child of God. His word is true. I believe it. And the word of it is yes. And amen with Christ Jesus. I gotta stir it up and say yes that were placed within me by the laying on our hands. You see, because I'm a man, I'm immortal. Yes. I said, I thought by now, Mom, I'd be one of those holy men filled with faith and I wouldn't have to wrestle with this old flesh every day. Why is it I don't ever hear other pastors talking about that? I feel like a hypocrite. Not because 
because I'm living sinful. But because I have moments when the devil comes to me and tries to discourage me, or I have moments when I lack the faith to believe God's going to supply all my needs according to his riches and glory, or the times when I'm concerned that my children are not at church yet and they're driving on a wet freeway, and I'm thinking, oh, I just can't stand it if the police come in here and tell me my kids have been in a wreck and they're dead. But guess what? I've got to trust the God of all creation. That his promises are true. That his promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. I've got to trust the things that he's told me. That all of my children have been sealed unto the day of salvation. Hallelujah. I've got to trust that I can pray for his angels to camp round and about them and take care of them. But I've also got to trust that should he choose in his sovereignty to call one of them home. My Lord, yes. So I'm going to serve him anyway. Yes. I'm going to serve him anyway. Yes. A lot of parents out with their children. I don't want to be one of them. Yes. I, I can only remember, I haven't experienced it, but I remember Brother Cleo after Vicky passed. And the conversation we had was supposed to stay confidential. All right now. But I just remember thinking that's got to be one of the hardest things on earth to face. Yes. But guess what? He was in his pulpit last week preaching and teaching the Word of God. Even when the scriptures were on the screen, he was preaching and teaching the Word of God. Amen? God. We got to keep going on. Amen. We got to keep trusting Christ Jesus. Yeah. We have to keep proclaiming his Word because his Word is true. Yeah. It is life. It's life everlasting. It's yeah. going to bring us everlasting life. And it's going to dwell in us for all of eternity. Can I get an amen? Amen. It is because of this kind of thing that God is about to explode in anger. It wasn't long ago that you were doing all that stuff and not knowing any better. But I feel like this is in the message. It's just like someone talking to a little preschool children. And sometimes I feel like in the Church of Jesus Christ, we're all in preschool again. Because we have been taught not to do the things that we still do. But you know better now, so make sure it's all gone for good. Your bad temper, your irritability, your meanness, your profanity, and your dirty talk. <clears throat> you know what? I have heard every single thing that was just mentioned and seen it out of the mouth of other Christians. Yeah, my Lord Jesus. And I'm not saying I have it either. I'm just saying these things should not be. Blessing and cursing should not come out of the same mouth. Yeah, right? But when we fail, we have to get up and say, that's not the standard. I'm not comparing it to Praise yourself. God. I'm comparing it to God. Amen. I'm comparing my standard is God. I know that. I, I hear to say, let's encourage one another in love. I don't want to. I don't want to get into a legalistic, condemning thing with All right. people. All right. I don't want. Oh, I'm better than you. I don't say that dirty word. No. No. If that's what you're getting out of this, you're missing the point. Amen. Each of us has a responsibility. To live as though we are children of God. Amen. How many of you here have children or grandchildren? Huh? When they when they when they go somewhere, don't you want them to behave? When they were little, when you went to a restaurant, didn't you want your children to behave? Yes. You want them to be proud of them? When you when, when they were young men or women, didn't you tell them? Remember yeah. what name you're wearing? You're wearing my name. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're known as Timothy Hinkle. Yeah. You're known as Jacob Hinkle. You're known as Matthew Hinkle. You're known as Ariana Hinkle. You're wearing my name. And not only my name, but my mom's name, my dad's name. When you go out and walk around people, I want my name to be honored, not honor my parents. I want to honor their name. Yes. Amen. Do you know when you say you are a Christian, 
You are all, you are wearing the name of Christ. He wants you to walk worthy of his name. Amen. Now, although you might fail, he wants you to get up and try to walk worthy of it. When you were out with your kids when they were little, you they do something like knock a soda all over the place or something crazy, you know, because they were acting up. But then they would say, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do that anymore, Dad. That, that, you know, all of a sudden that, that, that anger or that, that frustration with them right, subsides. Yeah. You know, it's all right. Yeah. You have, it's okay. It was an accident. We're going to clean. Right. Don't you think God is even more gracious to you. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I know he is towards me, or else I've been a Christmas critter a long time ago. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his teeth, and I put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and all in all. In the message, listen to this. Don't lie to one another. Praise God. You're done with that old lie. Yes, amen. I had somebody that, that was a brand new Christian say, oh. Everybody lies. You have to lie and make people think you're better than you are. I said, no, you don't. All right. We don't have to lie to one another. Say we can be ourselves, good or bad, you know, and then we ask the Lord to forgive us and help us. Amen. And we ask our brothers and sisters of Christ to pray for us. Yes. And we go along and we can lift each other up and we can, you know, I... I was, I was getting on to one of the boys this morning for, for sleeping a little bit late than they should have. And, but then, you know, the, the, the Holy Spirit says, make sure you, you don't leave it there. You know, and, and so I said, oh, a few God. minutes later, before I was walking out the door, I said, you know what? I'm proud of you. Yes. I'm proud of who you are. I'm proud of what you're doing. You need to work on this whole area, yes, but I'm proud of you. Be, be strong and a good group. And not only am I proud of you, I know God's proud of you. Yes, indeed. That's more important than whether I'm proud of you. Yes. Encourage one another. Yes, teach. Yes. But encourage. Yes, man. When you see somebody doing something right, tell them that too. Yeah. Yes. You know that, that, that old style of, of parenting? You know where, where you only tell your kids when they mess up, they're never good enough, they never measure up, they're never, they're, they're always a rotten little demon and you want them to go out playing the freeway? You know. That's not how God is to us. He tells us when we do well, too. You know when you're in praise and you're in worship and you feel his presence and it makes you happy all inside and all over and some of us tingle, some of us shout, some of us jump up and down. You know that feeling? That's, that's just God saying, that's not you. That's God. He's saying, hey, enter in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to let you see how my joy is over you. Yes, I'm dancing over you. I'm singing over you. I'm praying. I'm proud of you, son. I'm proud of you, daughter. Yes, yes. Right. Now you're dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the creator with his label on it. You ever seen these red carpet events? Oh, yeah. And they say, Jennifer Anderson, what are you wearing? And she I'm wearing Versace. You're right. <laughs> All right now. They even ask these little boys, "What are you? What are you wearing?" And they say, "Oh, Christian Dior." Yeah. Yeah, little boys, you have clothes made by the King of the Universe. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you have the garments of praise. Oh. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise you have the garments of praise. Yeah. You have the wedding garments of Christ Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah! Rejoice! Walk worthy! Don't, if you're wearing a Versace, are you going to go roll in the mud? Well, you're wearing a Yahweh, Yeshua Hamashiach. Go hold up, I'll if I see. You're wearing Christ Jesus, the Messiah. You're wearing God, the great I Am. 
the maker and finisher of our faith. You are, you are wearing Adonai. You are wearing Jehovah Rapha, the great healer. You are wearing the name above all names. You need to walk worthy of the garments that he's given you to wear. Now, if you fall in the mud, put it in the washing machine or right. send it to the dry cleaners. That's the blood of Jesus. Right, That's the blood of Jesus. Yes. That's a repentant heart. Yes. You have a repentant heart and you put it in the blood of Jesus. Yes. You ask for some shout it out, which yes. is the Holy Ghost. Yes. <laughs> When you get it, it's going to be white as snow, pressed, and ready to wear again. Yeah. Put it right back on, yeah. and then go walk worthy of the high calling. Yeah. Work. All of the old fashions are now obsolete. Words like Jewish and non Jewish, religious and irreligious, insider and outsider, uncivilized and unproved, slave and free, meaning nothing. From now on, everyone is defined by Christ. Everyone is included in Christ. Man, what do we read in Ephesians chapter 2? That Christ himself has torn down the middle wall of partition which once separated Jew from Gentile and out of the twain has made one new man. man. You see, there's not a God of the Old Testament and a God of the New Testament. There is one God. Man. And there's one people of God. Yeah. Both Jew and Gentile are made one in Messiah. Yes, Lord. A lot of the Jewish people, their eyes have been blinded for a season until the fullness of the Gentiles can't come in. But they will have the scales removed from their eyes and they will confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus because the word of God says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ is Lord. And those that are of his family, those who call him Abba Father, they will do so before the white throne judgment. All the rest will do it before they're condemned into the lake of fire. Yes, amen. Praise God, praise God. Where do you want to be? Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on the charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Let's look at the message. So we get out of the Christian ease a little bit. We get, we get caught up in that. Right. So chosen by God for this new life of love, dressed in the word of God, picked out for you, compassion, kindness, humility, quiet, strength, discipline, be even tempered. Oh, Man, I have to work on that one. We're screamers in my family. All right now. We scream. My neighbor said, do you realize not only are you a screamer, but you stay up past midnight every night and you scream. Said, I'm sorry. I'm embarrassed. I'm working on that. I'm not perfect yet. And sometimes I'm lazy too because we have a two story. And my kids go upstairs and shut the doors. My children do. Well, they're not children, they're young people now. But they go upstairs and they shut the doors. And you want you want them to come down and talk to you and say, Hey, Matt. No answer. You know. Matt! But, so now I have to get up and go knock on the wall. Matt! <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning. You didn't do the dishes! <laughs> <laughs> we have days. We can't do it all. But the word of God says that I should be even tempered. Content with second place. Quick to forgive an offense. If somebody says, forgive me, say, I already done. Work hard to forgive your enemies. Choose to do it. It's hard. When somebody looks at you and the devil speaks to them and they say, you are going down. It's hard to remember that is someone that needs Jesus in their life and he died on the cross for them the same as he did for you and that now you have greater responsibility to pray over their soul. Yes, Lord. Because the devil reveals himself in them. 
Because that person is wounded and some door opened for the devil to come in. And we need to pray for him even more. We got to, a lot of times you think you've forgiven somebody and they're out of your life for a long time. And when they come back into your life for whatever reason, all those old feelings come back up. You realize you really need to take it back to the cross of Calvary. Amen. You really need to see God's giving you a do-over for some reason. You're getting another opportunity to forgive. And you're going to have to take it back to the cross of Calvary and say, I want to be like you, Jesus. I want to forgive even my enemies. I want to forgive. I want to love them the way you love me. Amen. Praise God. For as quickly and completely as the Master forgave you, and regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Do you know what people know when you're genuine? And people know when you're a phone. There are other women and men, even in ministry, that when they're hugging me, I'm thinking to myself, I sure hope they don't have a pocket knife. Because if they do, they're going to bury it in my back. You know how it is, Pastor Tao. You know when people who smell at you in the face, amen? They look at you and they, and they, oh, I love you. And you know, all along, they're thinking of mean things. <laughs> right now. Right? Amen. It happens. Amen. But you know what? We have a greater responsibility to respond to that yes. with love. Amen. Well, how did Yeshua, how did Jesus respond? He went to Calvary's cross. Yes, he said, Father, forgive them because they know not what they do. We've got to learn how to be like him. Yeah. I saw a man attacked in this very church. And I saw him handle the attack with humility and love. And that spoke volumes to me. Volumes. I said, that's a man of God. I don't want to be like that. You know, we have to forgive. Even in the midst of the attack. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be faithful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Let's go to this message. Let's so let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of us is going off and doing your own thing. And cultivate faithfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in our lives. Praise God. Don't you want people to see Jesus in you? Yes, Lord. Jesus. Don't you want to not have to, to, to preach the Bible but live it? Don't you want to say, I, don't, I just I always feel so happy when I'm around you. Thank yes, you Lord. for showing me such love. Isn't that the testimony of Christ that you want people to feel? Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Let every detail in your lives, words and actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master Jesus, taking the God the Father every step of the way. Nice. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, promote not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. All right. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service, as merely as unto the Lord, and not unto men. Now, we don't have a system of servants and slaves that they did, but we could, in that day, that was their economy. People would take care of the servants of their house workers, their domestic people. Yes. Knowing that the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive the wrong that he has done, and there is no respect for persons. And Let's finish this in the, in the message. Wives, understand and support your husbands by submitting to them in ways that honor the master. Husbands, Go all out in love for your wives. Don't take advantage of that. Children, do what your parents tell you to. This delights the master to no end. Parents, 
Don't come down too hard on your children. You'll crush their spirits. Yes. Servants or employee, employees, do what you're told by your bosses, your earthly right. masters. Right. And don't just do the minimum that will get you by. Do your best. Hallelujah. Work from your heart for your real master, for God. Amen. Confident that you'll get paid in full when you come into your inheritance. Keep in mind always that the ultimate master you're serving is Christ. The sullen servant who does shoddy work will become responsible. Being a follower of Jesus doesn't cover up bad work. You know, in my professional life when I've been working in the real estate industry and when I was in the cattle business, sometimes I would meet people that were had little fish on the card and said they were a Christian. And they thought that meant I would act unethically with them. Okay, we're brothers in the same club, so you're gonna like not charge me, so you're gonna let me steal from your boss. No. You shouldn't ask for that of me, brother. You shouldn't ask me to do something wrong because we're both Christians. In fact, you and I have a higher standard. You should give my boss more than he's asking. Because you should want to honor Jesus. Yes, amen. We have to be that way. We should not lower our standards because we're Christians. We have to walk higher. Amen? Well, I hope you received something from Colossians chapter 3 today. I want you to know you are children of the Most High God. Because of the blood of Jesus, you can call him Abba. You can call him Daddy. He loves you. It's an everlasting love. But he does want you to work, work, walk worthy of that. If you haven't in the past, don't feel condemnation. Just be encouraged that God's telling you, okay, now is the time. Ask me. I'm going to give you the power. I'm going to give you the strength. I'm going to fill you with the holy boldness. And you're going to be all working. Walk worthy of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. You're going to press on to the prize, hallelujah, and then you're going to one day come with him in the air to redeem a lost world. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm a rock is going to sing us out and close in prayer. Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord, what shall I do? Stop like Jesus, somebody's calling my name. Sound like Jesus. Somebody's calling my name down like Jesus. Somebody's calling my name. Oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord, what shall I do? Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Hush, hush. Somebody's calling my name. Hush, hush. Somebody's calling my name. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, what shall I do? Once in a run, find you a hiding place. Once in a run.
Amen. 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 Amen.